Welcome to our video demonstration of the Phase 4 Engineering LEAP wireless motor monitor. The LEAP motor monitor is probably our most popular wireless transceiver node. While it is most often used with motors, its unique combination of sensing vibration, temperature, and electrical current draw are used in many other applications such as bearings, pumps, blowers, and compressors. Reliability research has found that prior to failures, equipment tend to shake more, heat up, and draw more electrical power by a factor of about 2x. With continuous monitoring and setting alarms at roughly 50% above baseline readings, weeks of notice to an oncoming failure is given to facilitate planning the maintenance and avoid expensive, unplanned downtime. Let me explain each part of this transceiver node and the parts of the whole system. Then we'll do a demonstration why this multi-sensor transceiver node typically has a return on investment in less than four months. The rugged polycarbonate transceiver node enclosure includes the long-range radio transmitter, an eight-year battery, and sensor interface electronics. The radio has a transmission distance of about 3,000 feet in open air and about 500 feet inside of a production plant. If you need longer radio transmission distance, a range extender node can be used. The transceiver node includes a recessed IP67 switch with bicolor LEDs. The LEDs give you a status on the quality and issues with the wireless radio connection. Anywhere from 1 to 30 of these rugged vibration modules can be connected to a transceiver node leveraging our industrial CAN bus interface. Each vibration module also includes an optional temperature sensor. At a user set time intervals, typically 15 minutes, the vibration module samples G-force at 5 kHz for 3 seconds on the X, Y, and Z axis. These 50,000 data points are then edge processed at the module into eight metrics that are very effective in giving warning to an impending failure. Most of our clients use one or two vibration modules per transceiver node. The transceiver node also has an option for one or two thermocouples. Thermocouples are not always needed because the vibration modules have temperature sensors in them and can detect overheating. But in some applications, monitoring temperature at different locations than the vibration module is most effective. We see clients using thermocouples to monitor oil temperature or connecting them to internal thermocouples that the motor manufacturer has built into the motor. The third sensor is the electrical current transformer or amp clamp that monitors the current going to the motor. When a motor starts drawing more power, it is often a clue that there's an issue with the machine that may need corrective action in the next few weeks. We include a split core amp clamp that is really easy to install. If you are monitoring something other than a motor, such as a pump, you may not need the amp clamp. When the whole system comes together, the transceiver node transmits the sensor data over the air and the gateway catches the data sent over the air from up to 60 wireless transceiver nodes. The gateway then passes the data to the LEAP software. The gateway can be connected to a PC or a local area network. The software is all website based, so all you need is a web browser like Chrome or Safari. The gateway can also pass data to a local server, the cloud, or other plant monitoring software. Now to the fun part of the demonstration. We are going to attach the LEAP transceiver node to a box fan. To mount each part of the transceiver node in a production plant, we offer several options to mount the node, vibration module, and thermocouple. Our magnet mount option is the most popular because it makes installation fast and easy. We're doing our demonstration with a box fan because everybody's familiar with the level of vibration a box fan makes on low and high speed. So we have our vibration module attached to the box fan connected to the transceiver node. We just have our thermocouple hanging out right now, but we do have the current transformer connected to the cord of the fan, so we'll be able to watch the current 
as we change speeds on the fan. Now let's take a look at the software. We have the unique ID number of the device node. We have the thermal couple temperature and the amp clamp, which is zero right now because uh, the motor isn't running. Then down in this section, we have the eight vibration parameters that give us all sorts of information about the motor and whether it's entering into a failure condition. All right, let's turn on the fan and watch what happens. As I turn on the fan, watch these different parameters, the amp clamp and the vibration, and we'll watch them change. Here we go. So we've got the fan on low speed, and we have the device node transmitting about every five seconds. That's a lot more than you would normally do in a production plant, but for demonstrations, it works well. So you can see now that the amp clamp has bumped up to about 4.2 amps, and you can see the vibration parameters starting to change. Now I'll go ahead and bump it up even more, and you can see some of the vibration readings jump quite a bit. For instance, this one right here is at 2.011, and it jumped to 21. So it gives you a feel for the sensitivity. Our amp clamp has jumped up to 0.52, so we, we can see what's going on with the machine at this point. From the graph, you can see how easy it is to set baselines and then set alarms. We can also scroll up here and quickly see what the settings are on the device node. Uh, we can click on history and we can also see what alerts are set. Up here on the main part of the software, we can configure the device node to change its sample and transmit interval. We can download all the readings to an Excel file, and we can set text, telephone, and email alerts on any of these parameters shown on this page. All right, I thought we'd go ahead and take another look at the graphs with the fan running. You can see that the fan was at running at full speed here, then we turned it back down to low speed. Now we'll turn it up to high speed briefly. We'll get a few data points there, and then we'll turn it off. There's our current going back up again. And you can see the vibration also increasing as the fan is now shaking more. And there it bumped up. We'll, we'll go a few more seconds and see one more data point and then we'll turn it off. There we go. Now we'll turn the fan all the way off. And, uh, we'll see one, one or two more data points just to give a feel for the sensitivity of the system. There are many options with the LEAP motor monitor, and there are many advanced features in the LEAP system that we didn't have time to cover in this video. Please contact us and talk to an expert to help you configure an initial system to try that is tailored to your exact needs.